Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to one more game from Candidates Tournament 2020, the most important uh, tournament this year, because the winner of this tournament will have a chance to challenge Magnus Carlsen uh, for the world champion uh, title. And today I'd like to show you this game. This is round two and here we have Fabiano Caruana, a player from USA. He's half Italian, half American. Actually, he play uh, for for uh, USA before he played for Italy for a short time. He's ranking 2842 and that's the second highest ranking in the world just behind Magnus Carlsen and he is definitely number one favorite in this tournament. He is 27 years old and he play as white and his opponent is on opposite side because Kirill Alexeyenko is the lowest ranked player in this tournament, 2698 according to the Fidelist, that gives him 39 plays in the world. He is only 22 years old, not really experienced player on the top level tournaments and he play as black. So without further ado, let's jump into the game. Caruana open with d4, we have knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3 and bishop b4, so Nimzo Indian defense and here Caruana, uh, he actually said in interview that uh, he gonna choose the line for less experienced uh, players uh, like Alexienko because uh, he probably is not prepared very well for you know all the lines like this, so he played very sharp f3, uh, of course preparing e4, uh, we have d5 by Alexienko and now a3, a3 kicking the bishop or forcing the bishop to exchange for the knight which is the main move. Uh, but Alexienko play bishop on e7 and this move is quite good move. Uh, Carlsen won with Nakamura by playing this move. Also uh, Karyakin play uh, against Wesley. So uh, Vishwanathan Anand uh, against uh, Mamediarov. So uh, definitely is, everything is okay with this line. We have e4, uh, d takes on e4 f takes on e4 and now c5 by Alexeyenko challenging this center this center looks really really amazing so uh, c5 challenging the center and now we have d5 e takes on d5 e takes on d5 and now Caruana already uh, in the move 9 he has created the, the past pawn and is also protected the past pawn so in the right time it can start to march uh, Alexeyenko just castle and look at the position of the white king it's still in the center so it looks quite dangerous this is why Caruana play bishop on e2 first we have rook on e8 uh, going to this open um, file and of course knight f3 preparing the castle we have bishop on g4 and Caruana just castle Knight B on D7 by Alexeyenko and here uh, we have D6, D6. So uh, that means Caruana gonna play very sharp because this pawn actually leaving the protector from C4 and now it's on his own and uh, something has to be done. It's of course um, now it's advanced and scaring the bishop. So bishop has to be moved to F8, but also this pawn uh, gonna be very lonely without support there. So um, this is why first we have h3 uh, kicking the bishop. We have bishop on uh, h5 and white also prepared the shelter. h2 shelter is very very handy because now this bishop can actually move to h2 and from there can protect uh, d6. So uh, that's the plan for Caruana but first he play knight on b5 defending this d6 pawn but also a creature creating the threat. So uh, threat is of course winning the exchange and uh, black has to do something about that. And in the interview Caruana said that rook on b8 would be the best and then after uh, for example bishop on f4 the game could continue. Uh, knight on a7 not really work for white because they can achieve nothing. Bishop on d6 would win the pawn and that would be very very good for, for black of course. After taking the bishop now this bishop on e2 is hanging as well so uh, black would stand quite well here. 
but rook on b8 was not played actually in this position was rook on e6 this is the Alexienko move and Caruana said it's very very strange looking move uh, he played bishop on f4 now uh, and we have a6 by Alexienko so forcing white to do something uh, with this knight knight on c7 attacking the rook so forking these two rooks but actually black now can play rook on e4 uh, and white has to decide what to do it's possible to actually take this rook uh, but it's not really the best idea because rook on f4 knight on c7 and now knight on b6 attacking um, the pawn on c4 we could have queen on d2 attacking the rook uh, but now queen on d6 defending the rook and after exchanging the queens for example bishop on d6 the knight would be under attack so for example knight on d5 knight b on d5 c takes on d5 and now white don't have any advantage and it's difficult to actually continue the game even with extra uh, exchange but actually this pawn gonna fall soon so uh, two pawns for the exchange not really worth it uh, this is why uh, bishop on h2 was played by Fabiano Caruana we have rook on c8 and here white has to decide what to do interesting fact that this is move 19 so white still have to make 21 moves and black of course as well uh, but black has only 26 minutes on the clock so Alexeyenko spent a lot of time until this point and Caruana still have one hour and 20 minutes that's a huge difference so Caruana want to complicate the things and he play very aggressively g4 and now it's a lot of calculations to do if uh, Alexeyenko plays something like bishop on g6 it's very very complicated now for example bishop on d6 attacking the rook um, so rook if rook goes on e3 then we would have bishop on g6 uh, h takes on g6 and now queen d2 attacking the rook again now rook e4 queen d3 attacking the rook and actually uh, this is the threat g5 and if the knight moves for example to e8 then white can pick up the rook so that would be very very dangerous so knight on b6 as a counter play would have to be played uh, and now rook a on d1 and knight on c4 this is possible but now knight on d5 uh, eliminating this defender of the of the rook so that would be the dangerous uh, and now knight on d6 would have to be uh, played so defending the rook so quite complicated imagine that Alexienko now have to calculate and this is only the one line there are more complicated lines here uh, but for example bishop on d6 queen on d6 and now a knight on f6 first g takes on f6 and now now queen can take the rook or queen actually can take also um, d6 queen exchange and after bishop on d6 and rook on d6 white stands better and it's not really complicated the end game so um, that's the option for Alexeyenko of course if he can calculate that this is why he choose bishop takes on g4 and after h takes on g4 knight takes on g4 and what's the difference okay uh, so the material is similar the point is that now uh, white king is in quite open without the protection of the of the pawns and also black still have the queen and still have most of the pieces so that's the big difference and Caruana has to be very very careful here uh, he play bishop on d3 and now uh, attacking the rook so if rook goes on e3 actually would not work because bishop on f4 uh, will win the material so uh, not really an option so Alexienko found something else knight on h2 attacking the rook on f1 Caruana uh, went for that exchange so we have bishop on e4 knight on f1 and queen takes on f1 and now Alexienko has only 15 minutes and he still have to make 18 moves so um, that's not much time it's actually about one minute per move uh, and he played 
say bishop on d6, but actually he could uh, wait with this bishop on d6. First, he could improve the position of the knight. So knight on f6 would be much better. Uh, coming to f6 with tempo on this bishop bishop actually can get the tempo back playing something like bishop on f5 with attack on the rook a rook would have to go on b8 and now rook on d1 defending at this pawn but actually doesn't work because bishop takes on d6 anyway now the knight is under attack so queen can take it uh, knight d5 g6 and black is totally fine here and uh, can uh, you know defend that and with these three pawns actually uh, it's very very difficult to attack the the black king so that could be the best option for black however alexienko play bishop on d6 first uh, and now knight on d5 and and here knight on f6 doesn't work anymore because knight on f6 actually uh, would be uh, met with knight on f6 queen on f6 and now queen on h3 with attack on h7 that would be dangerous but also uh, attack on the rook on c8 so uh, that's unplayable for black uh, so after knight on d5 we have g6 uh, so now Queen on h3 uh, is not so dangerous. Caruana play queen on h3 anyway and now threatening to capture the knight on d7 uh, and if black recapture then we would have the fork um, you know on the queen and the king so that's the threat and black has to react somehow Alexienko has only five minutes to make 15 moves so a really critical situation he play king on g7 but actually there is more sneaky way to defend rook on c6 can be played and it doesn't look like it changed anything but now actually queen on d7 is impossible to play so queen on d7 bishop on h2 with check and now king h2 queen d7 and there is no trick there is no fork here because this rook actually now defends f6 so uh, that would be very sneaky way and also rook on d6 would be very handy if this knight actually moves from d5 somewhere then a rook can move to the b6 square attack b2 and if not then can go to very active uh, e6 uh, that would be pretty good move however Alexeyenko very short on time he just play king on g7 and g6 of course uh, prepare this g7 we have king on h1 by caruana preparing the the space for the rook uh, and here knight d5 so alexienko asking uh, do you want to exchange the knights of course uh exchanging the knight doesn't make any sense bishop on e5 and white would have the problems with continue the game this bishop on this diagonal would be very very powerful so doesn't make any sense this is why caruana play knight on h4 and here only five minutes on the clock and still have to make 14 moves um, very very difficult and what to play rook on c6 is still possible because after rook on g1 actually bishop f8 uh, and now king can go to g8 uh, the bishop can come to g7 and it would be not easy uh, to force this defense of black so uh, white would have a lot of problems and probably would be impossible to to go through maybe caruana would find the way but it's uh, definitely not easy however we have h five h5 there is the problem with that move because now g6 is weakened and very very seriously weakened caruana play rook on g1 and now it starts to get dangerous uh, we have bishop on f8 and this is the final mistake rook on c6 uh, not really maybe maybe it's too late for rook on c6 but this is the last chance uh, for black and i will show you at the end uh, what would happen with rook on c6 uh, but i would like to show you first bishop on f8 that was played in the game uh, and caruana play knight on f4 so bringing one more attacker 
to g6 so now we have four attackers and black actually can do nothing only knight on g4 so that was the idea of h5 bringing the defender and blocker on g4 uh, but actually it doesn't matter much we have knight on h5 with check g takes on h5 and now bishop on f5 so now this attacker goes to um you know destroy the defense on g4 we have bishop on e7 now uh, bringing the attacker on the um, on the knight on h4 so black try to win some material here in the last stand uh, we have bishop takes on g4 h takes on g4 and now queen g4 with check so black don't have really time for that bishop on g5 here and now queen on h5 and in this position actually Kirill Alexeyenko resigned the game and I promised you uh, to check this uh, rook on c6 in the last stand here it's already too late for this rook on c6 it could work you know twice before but now rook on c6 actually um it makes white life uh, more difficult uh, because now knight on f4 the same way doesn't work uh, knight g4 knight g5 g takes on h5 and now bishop on f5 can't be played because king on f8 before we had this bishop on f8 and um, and now king on f8 could escape and after bishop g4 h takes on g4 and queen on g4 uh, actually queen on f6 and black actually are you know up the pawn and that would be winning for black so uh, not an option the problem is white actually don't need to play bishop on f5 they can play knight on f5 with check so uh, king on f8 and now uh, queen on h5 now threatening the checkmate on h8 and of course winning the knight so that would be the end bishop e5 have to be played uh, to to prevent the checkmate but then queen on g4 uh, and then whatever rook on g6 uh, rook on d1 that would be the fancy way uh, attacking the the queen also the the rook is protected uh, black can of course exchange but that would be losing but anyway after queen on f6 uh queen h5 and that's also winning for white because white has uh, extra piece for only the pawn not for three pawns like before but only for the pawn so uh, that also uh, this rook on c6 would be uh, also um, losing for black uh, so this is why in queen h5 in this position uh, Kirill Alexeyenko resigned the game and um, the bishop gonna be lost f6 doesn't work because it's checkmate in seven so knight on f5 with check king f8 uh, queen h8 uh, king f7 uh, queen h7 uh, king f8 and now just queen g7 and uh, king has to move to e8 there is only one spot and now rook e1 with check so black only can throw the pieces on the way but at the end that would be just checkmate so um this is why nothing can be done here in this position and kirin alexienko resign the game so if you like this video just press like if for some reason you don't like this video press and like and of course as always i leave the uh, study in the leeches so link in the descriptions and uh, leave the comment what do you think about uh, fabiano caruana performance so far and about uh, what's happening in the tournament because ding liren actually lost two first game in the tournament definitely something bothers him uh, he cannot concentrate he cannot play uh, on the top of his uh, skills and something is definitely wrong here and if you want to see another videos press subscribe smash the bell button and uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one